three breaths, and the first two you can thank LG for. So the dive boat has just returned after a really long day's dive. Um, it's time to see what samples they managed to bring up. We got, we got lots. My name is Thea Papalizio. I'm a marine biologist. More specifically, I'm a phycologist, which means that I study algae. You've been to the seashore, and you've probably seen seaweed washed up on the beach, right? So that's algae. Algae is a very broad term. If we're talking about all of the microalgae and the macroalgae together, they really contribute the majority of the oxygen that we're, that we're breathing right now. Start with this lovely green. And then I've got to get some water in this tray so you can see what it looks like when it's all spread out like it would be in its environment. This is the lineage actually that led to land plants, the green algae. Oh really? Yeah. So this is actually one big... Gosh it is, it's one big individual branching piece. Yeah. Crikey. They're very similar to plants, but they're much older than land plants. But they're similar in that they photosynthesize and they photosynthesize so that they can um, get energy. So they actually create their own food, sugars, using sunlight. And in the process of doing that, they also produce oxygen, which is obviously very important for most life on Earth. And this will get a proper herbarium label with all of the collection information um, later on back at the lab. But for now, I'm just gonna give it a number. I've seen, you know, samples and specimens like this in, in books before in collections um, yeah. and you always wonder where they came from and what their story is and the fact that you can actually kind of see them or handle them if you're lucky enough to do so and here we are actually making one. I never thought I'd actually find algae so beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what we want, right? Yeah. That's what it's all about. So what's next there? What's, uh, what's a tight the... little hole here so that everything gets nice and pressed and squished down. And then do we just leave it? Then it has to go somewhere warm and dry. Okay. So, follow me. All right, sure. Thank you. Are you taking me? The engine room? Your protection? If We know that the environment is changing, right? And Bermuda is a very interesting island because it exists at a, at a climate boundary where we have the tropics and the warm temperate coming together. Being able to have a kind of baseline of what's here now makes it possible for us to compare that with somewhere down the line when environmental conditions may have changed. Have we lost species because of the changed conditions? or have things just kind of shifted seasonally, things like that, we would be able to answer those questions if we know exactly what we had to begin with, right? So Thea's samples are still drying out in the engine room. Uh, they're gonna be down there for a few days, but she's promised to show me some of the other ones that she's been making. Hey Thea. Right, let's have a look at these then. So these aren't the ones that we did yesterday because they're gonna take a little bit of a while to, yeah, uh, to dry out. Yeah, they will probably be wet. Wow. Yeah, this is beautiful. Wow, look at that. Look at this one. Look, doesn't that look like someone has just painted it? It's amazing. They all look so different. Mm -hmm. Do they? look the way they look for a reason? Like, have they evolved to look like this to attract anything or to look a particular way in the water? Yeah, we kind of think of flowers that way, right? As being yeah. colorful and smelling good to attract pollinators. Um, I'm not so sure that the algae are 
trying to attract anything because yeah. usually the stuff that's attracted to them is attracted them to them to eat them, which would be a bad thing, so right? If anything, they'd want to put them off. A lot of them that are really highly branched, that would be an adaptation for you know having more surface area for photosynthesis. There's just a huge range. These that they have a really long evolutionary history, and there really is such a huge diversity, and some of them are really quite beautiful. Being a part of the Necton Mission XL Catlin Deep Ocean Survey, it's been really special to be a scientist on the ship with other scientists that are doing, you know, other types of science. We haven't done this kind of sampling in deeper water. Now we're getting specimens from, you know, 150 meters and places where we haven't been able to collect before and get this this genetic data. You've seen all these beautiful pressed specimens. Botanists have been doing this for centuries. And so it's kind of really interesting for me to be part of that history of collecting plants and maintaining them for, you know, many, many, many future generations. But then on top of that, I get to do some really, um, you know, modern science. And to me, that's, that's pretty special.